What's up, tech junkies, tech freaks, and those out there who just like tech shit? It's me, Elric, back here once again, the Tech of Tomorrow YouTube channel, to bring you guys a really cool video of the ASUS GTX 670. That's right, this is their really unique version. It is their Direct CU2 version. You can see I've got two of these cards behind me, and not only these cards, the Direct CU2, they're top cards as well, which means they're geared for overclocking. So before we actually jump in and start showing you guys the rest of the video, let's take a really closer look at the test station. All right, folks, so before we jump into the video, let's take a look at the test station. Now, every good test station starts out with its motherboard. We decided to go with the X79 platform, and we're using the ASUS Republic of Gamers. This is their Rampage 4 Extreme motherboard. All kinds of features, LGA 2011. You guys can see it's all laid out nicely. We're using a water cooler that you can see over to my right here. This is the standard Intel water cooler. We're running the i7-3820. This is a four core CPU running at 3.6 gigahertz at its standard rate. Next up is the memory. This is from Patriot. This is the Division 4. This is a 32 gigabyte kit of DDR3 memory. XMP profile running at 1866 megahertz. Down here below that, we have our power supply. This is a Silverstone 1200 watt modular one, really semi-modular. Now, right here, we have the ASUS Zonar Essence sound card. I hooked this up to spin this thing, and it sounds incredible. After that, we have the two video cards. These are obviously the ASUS GTX 670 DirectCU2 top cards. They require dual 6-pin power connections. We have those right here. They connect right up here on the top. You can see all the heat pipes running across the top right here. Over here, we have a single SLI connection. Now we'll get on to the hard drives and stuff. Down below here, I decided to go with all SSD drives. So I've got a couple of them hooked up here. On the front, and for my standard drive, I've got the Intel 520 series SSD. This is the 240 gigabyte model. I actually unhooked my OCZ Octane drive so we could actually get a better look at it because it's in the back of the system. This is a 512. Gives me plenty of room for all my games and all the stuff that I'm doing. So this is our test station, folks. Let's jump in now and let's show you guys how we actually do our gaming test. All right, folks, now that you guys have seen the test station and everything else, before we actually go into the benchmarks, we're gonna show you a couple different things here, so we'll go a lot of explanation. For the video card driver, it's 30142. This is the very latest video card driver that you can get over NVIDIA. So if you've got a card out there and you've brought it from any other manufacturer, make sure as soon as you install the video cards, restart your system and go in, that you download the driver and then install it. So right here, I'm going to agree and continue. I'm just going to use an express installation. You guys can see this on the screen right here. And now I'm going to install the driver. So after we install the driver, give me just a second and we'll be back and we'll talk about some of the testing. Moving forward, now as soon as you jump into the Windows environment, the very first thing you're going to want to do is hop into your NVIDIA control panel. You're going to want to do this because you want to make sure that your cards are set up for maximum SLI performance. So here, you can see right here in this window, when you first enable the cards, they're not set, it's disabled. Then with the click of the mouse button, the screen changes, and then you have it enabled. That's the very first thing that we did. Also, next, we ran Firmark to test the heat of the cards. We set it for 2560 by 1600 for the benchmark burn-in that we're going to do. But as far as just the testing goes, we use the straight-up test, which is 1080, which is 1920 by 1080, which gives us the heat of the cards. So we ran that. You can see that both cards aren't getting hotter than 71 Celsius. Now, as far as the games go, we set everything to its maximum performance value. First of all, we're going to show you Batman. You guys can see here, we set everything to its highest value. Screen size at 2560 everything set to as high as it can be. Now we're gonna jump in and we're gonna show you one of the actual test videos that we use. We use Metro 2033. You guys can see this here on the screen. We have everything set to its highest value and we'll go ahead and for this particular one, we'll go ahead and run it and let you guys see it.
you guys can see up here in the corner, this shows all the frames per second. Alright folks, so we're not going to show you every test, but I just thought it would be better if we explained at least one of the tests to you guys. So you guys can see right here, average frame rates was 44, maximum frame rates was 184.57, and the minimum frame rates was 7.61. Now, this was run with this at 2560 by 1600 with all the bells and whistles set to its highest. We're going to be running on two resolutions, 2560 by 1600 and 1920 by 1080. So that said, let's jump into the benchmark song and see the rest of the benchmarks. Alright folks, so we got to rock out, man, to the benchmark song. Always love that. You guys can see that these two cards in SLI mode perform very, very fast. Now, they also run pretty cool. Didn't get hotter than 71 Celsius, which I think is pretty well also. Now, we're going to talk about another aspect of the car before we get to the conclusion. This is Asus's GPU tweak, which allows you to go in and do a lot of different stuff to your card, including the overclocking. Over here to the right, we can see that we've already enabled GPU-Z. It shows you all the different aspects of the card. Right now we're currently in the tuning mode where you can go in here and manually adjust things whatever you'd like them to be. Your voltage, your memory, whatever you want to do. You can also go online to live update. Live update allows you to check all of your drivers, allows you to change your BIOS, you can see it shows both GTX 670s and their current BIOS that are on them. If I wanted to change them, I'd click that, and it would show me if I actually was a newer BIOS. Here's the settings, and here's where you go in. You can set this to your boot up on your start. You can remove or enable the skins. Also has the tools. You have your tuning, live update, recording, hotkeys you can set. All are in here. There are a bunch of different user profiles actually available on the screen. Profile 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 are all available here. And this is a really cool piece of software. We have another video. If you missed that, go check that out in the description below over at motherboards.org. We explain how to use GPU tweak fully and how it affects your overclocking using one of these cards. So all right, folks, that was a lot of information we gave in this video. Sorry if this video was a little bit longer than others, but we were trying to give you a lot of information. That's why I went into the procedures of how we install the card, how we set up the SLI, how we do our testing, our test station, all that other stuff. It's just a lot of information, but we want you guys to have that. Now, at the end of the day, these cards go from anywhere from $500 to about $460 online. So to get a pair of them in SLI is going to cost you around $1,000, but you also get a shitload of power. 
Also, the Direct CU top cards have a lot of flexibility as far as overclocking. All the scores that we showed you today were with the GPU tweak enabled to allow the cards to do their automatic overclocking. You guys can see that all of the scores are very high compared to other cards out there. These things also run relatively cool. GPU tweak runs really well, it's simple to use. So at the end of the day, you get a pair of cards that run very, very fast. They'll play any game you want, any resolution you want, including multi-monitor technology, since they have so much stuff banged into them. I know they're a little bit costly, but if you're a fan of NVIDIA cards and you like this type of thing, you're not gonna care about the money, you're only gonna care about the performance. So great performance, very cool, GPU tweak, ASUS support and warranty. I got to say, that's Senator's choice here on Tech of Tomorrow. See you, see, oh. see you guys later.